So the coyote um, was originally described back in the early 1800s. The first description was about 1830. The very first person to see a coyote and describe it, anyone know who that is? Uh, Lewis and Clark, exactly, exactly. So it was actually William Clark was the first one to see it. And it took them about six months before they collected their first specimen. So they missed many, many, many times. So even back then, coyotes were very difficult to, to harvest. But since that time, since that very first initial description, we've had kind of this antagonistic relationship between coyotes and ourselves. And in fact, uh, Mark Twain had probably the most, I think, most descriptive um, um, thing that he wrote about coyotes, and that is the coyote is a living, breathing allegory of want. He is always poor, out of luck, and friendless. He is so spiritless and cowardly that even while his exposed teeth are pretending a threat, the rest of his face is apologizing for it. So, and that's pretty much classic, and the view toward coyotes hasn't changed one little tiny bit. It's pretty much still the same. This uh, was a two-page spread in the uh, magazine Texas uh, Fish and Game, just uh, back in 2005. So that's 2005, and uh, you can see urban man killers, and down here you can't see it, but coyotes are attacking humans across the country as Texas next. Just as an example of how um, our attitudes and, and really kind of our misperceptions about these animals influence how we think about them. So it still continues today. Right. So this is my study area back in 1879. This is a contemporary um, uh, artist rendering of uh, Chicago that was published in Harper's Bazaar, again, in, in that period. And at that time, already, there were a million people uh, living in the Chicago region. It was already a metropolitan area. Also at that time, there were no coyotes living there. There were no carnivores of any uh, note at all. So we started off with zero coyotes in that area, much like Ohio. Ohio had zero coyotes in 1879. No coyotes in the state at all. So our progression here is going to be very similar between Chicago and Ohio. This is what Chicago looks like. Yeah. Um, were they there originally and pushed out, or they just had never been there? Right. In terms of Chicago, the question is, were they there originally and pushed out, or were they never there? It's up for debate. Uh, right now, the general feeling is that probably uh, they, were, uh, they, they arrived in Illinois probably about in the 1840s and 1850s. So in 1879, they might have been there, but it was already a metro area prior to that. So they may never have occurred there. Now, other people suggested that because Illinois is primarily prairie at that time, uh, coyotes were there. But so far, the, the uh, archaeological evidence doesn't really suggest that. So really, they were west of the Mississippi, and only in the late 1800s moved their way into the Illinois area. So, but this is what, of course, the landscape looks like today. In fact, if you go out there tomorrow, this is just outside of O'Hare, and that is where we do our research. So we're studying how coyotes use this landscape now. And it's now that the landscape looks like this that coyotes have moved in. It wasn't when it was relatively rural. It is when it looks like this. And the reason why I point this out is that if coyotes can live in this area and be successful, then they can be successful anywhere. Anywhere. So a little bit about our study. Uh, we began in 2000, and actually in March of 2000, when we caught our very first coyote. I'll show you that coyote in just a second. She's uh, my favorite coyote of all time. Uh, so far, this is a little bit out of date, we've caught a uh, um, little over 300 coyotes so far and radio collared um, about 200. Uh, I think we're just over 200 animals right now. This is the largest study that's ever been done on coyotes, not just in urban areas, but in any other area as well, and the longest running. So we're into our eighth year at the moment. Um, it's very rare to be able to do wildlife studies for that long a period. There are a few that are out there, wolves in particular, but not so much for coyotes. And we radio track these coyotes day and night. We do it during the year, every single week. Uh, there's, someone, there's someone going out, uh, probably not tonight because it's Sunday, but tomorrow they will be radio tracking our coyotes. And we do this both on the ground as well as in the air. And it's tough to keep up with them um, in, urban, in these urban areas. But I'll show you some of the things that we've learned about them. Um, 
what I'll touch on today, I'm not going to try and address everything because we only have um, a, a little bit of time here. So I'll talk a little bit about their distribution, where they came from, especially in terms of Ohio, and as well as there. What are these coyotes? Uh, how do they work? So what do they die from? Uh, what affects their rep reproduction? Their social system, movement patterns, and diet. Again, and I will we'll relate it to what you find out here. And then this ecological role. And another way of putting that is uh, the question that I get all the time, all the time, is what good are coyotes? Why well, have them at all? And that's the unscientific question that relates to their ecological role. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So we're talking about where they were from. So historically, back in the 1600s, at least when the Spaniards first began making their way up into the the U.S., or what's now the U.S., this was believed to be their, their geographic range. So they are um, a Midwestern and Southwestern species. They prefer um, open areas. They prefer open grassland habitat, like golf courses. Um, so in, even when they have their choices, if it's a wooded habitat versus an open habitat, they still feel most comfortable and they spend most of their time in the open areas. That doesn't mean that they can't use wooded areas. In fact, in our area, in the Chicago area, wooded areas provide important cover for them, but they still prefer to go out and forage and hunt out in the open where they can move. They are built for moving, and this kind of habitat provides it for them. Now, they moved eastward. In fact, um, among our North American carnivores, they are the most successful carnivore species in North America. They have doubled their ge geographic range. So this is their current range now. So they're found in all 49 states, and uh, most of the provinces, or all the provinces of Canada, usually on the southern side. No other carnivores experience this kind of range expansion. Most of them have been contracted. So those would be things like the wolf, the bear, mountain lions, and things like that. These guys expanded. Most of this expansion occurred in the 20th century, usually in about the mid-20th century. What's interesting about that is that that's when we had the greatest amount of predator control going on nationwide, most of it directed toward coyotes. We were paying, and we in fact, we still pay government agents to go out and kill as many coyotes as possible. They have no protection over here in the eastern U.S. In, U in Ohio, uh, they are considered a game animal, but they have no season. You can hunt them year-round. There's no bag limit. You can take as many coyotes as you want. And that's true for almost every single one of these states in the East. In the West, they have bounties. And, they try, and then bounties were used to try and reduce their numbers. And so all they did with all of that was they increased their range by uh, 100% and increased their abundance. Do you have to have a license? Uh, you do have to have a hunting license to be able to shoot coyotes unless they are a nuisance animal. And then you have to have a, a nuisance uh, permit to do that. Right. Um, but they're the, they have the least amount of regulation of any game animal by far. The interesting thing about this is that this expansion to the east occurred in two different ways. One was through a northern passage, another was directly across. This northern passage ended up with a different kind of coyote in the far northeast. And so sometimes you'll hear the term an eastern coyote. That does refer to an animal that's morphologically different and genetically different from the coyotes we have here in Ohio because our coyotes came directly from the west. What happened in that northern expansion was that they um, interbred with wolves at some point. And so now in the far northeast, you have um, coyotes that are larger than our coyotes and they do have wolf genes in them. So, but our coyotes, a lot of people suggest, especially over in eastern Ohio, that we have those, those eastern coyotes there We've uh, been working with the State University of New York to do a genetic sample of our coyotes in Ohio, and I can tell you so far, there's no evidence of that at all, at all. Um, in fact, this is that genetic analysis. I'm not gonna go through how we do this, but these are all the different locations where animals have been sampled, and it turns out that our Ohio coyotes are no different genetically than coyotes in Texas. They are different from the coyotes up there in the Northeast. So geographically, um, they're closer to them, but genetically, they're different. Yeah. The coyotes in Oklahoma and Texas are a good bit smaller than mm -hmm. the coyotes we have here. Right. So are there any chance ours are crossing on dogs also? Nope. Um, in fact, we've been looking at that as well. 
and they just finished the analysis 